One of the great features with OBS Studio, and really the reason why it was originally called OBS Studio, is the feature Studio Mode. Now you've had this little button down here in the lower right hand corner for a long time and you've wondered, well, what really does Studio Mode do? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. What is Studio Mode? How can we use it in our live stream? I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that we can do it, including the one that I just showed you right now using lower thirds. So if you're interested, then stay tuned. But before we do that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Owned.pro. Owned.pro is a great resource for Twitch streamers who are looking to upgrade their live streams with a library of over 600 different premium stream packages, integrated chatbot. There's all kinds of tools available. Now I am going to use owned own minimal series stream package to do some tutorials on OBS Studio that I will use from my own.pro account. And you can too for a low fee, a monthly fee that gives you access to everything that own.pro can give you, including their own audio library from Epidemic Sound. So if you want more, I have a link down in the description below and you can get 50% off using code TFS at checkout. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about studio mode and how you activate it. And it's very easy. There's a button down here in the lower right hand corner. You click that and that will take you into studio mode. Now this UI, let's walk through this real quick. Two basic screens here that you're looking at. One is your preview, one is your program. Now your program screen, that is the one that is being sent to your broadcast service, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, whatever. This is what your viewers are seeing, the screen here on the right. It does have the labels above the top, so you'll know which ones they are. The preview screen is the one that you have set up so that when you transition, it will go from preview to the program. But the preview screen also has something else that you really need to understand. And that is the fact that you can edit your preview screen while you're streaming live, sending your program screen to your viewers. So that's what's so cool about this is you can go in and you can add sources. Like let's go and we will add, uh, let's see, let's add a text source here. And I'll go and let's see, we'll just create a new one. And we'll just type a hello. So this hello is an extra source that you've now added. You're streaming live, say we're streaming live here. And then when you're ready to transition, it will transition over and show you your hello. Now here you cannot edit. You can see I can click on this. I cannot touch anything. So if there's something out of place, you will then need to transition that scene back over to your preview so you can then edit. So you can, go in here and then move things around if something's on top of each, uh, you know, on top of each other like it was before and transition back. And then you, what you're seeing is what you're previewing here. And then there's your program screen. Okay, so that's how generally studio mode works. That is really the main purpose of it. But you can take advantage of this in a couple of ways. Another way that you can use studio mode is transitioning in and out graphics. In the case here, I have a lower third that I've made using a simple text file inside of OBS. And what I've done is I've added a background color and I've brought the opacity up to 100%. So it's giving you this little box with the text in the middle of it. And by simply using the transition functions that you have between both your preview and program screens, you can then transition this in and out. Now I recommend you using like a cut or a fade. I don't recommend a slide because it doesn't have the same effect. But when you're using a cut or a fade or even a luma wipe, it only affects the source that's different between the scenes. In this case, the only difference between these two scenes, my normal program screen that is my main cam and the second one where I've added my main main cam seen as a source within this new one is this lower third that I've made. So by hitting the transition button or hitting the cut, I've hit the transition button. Now my, the transition button here, and this is something you need to know, that it is slave to your default transition that is selected down here. In this case, it's a 1000 millisecond fade or a one second fade. But you can also have these trick or trick. You can also have these quick transitions that you can use these quick buttons for. So here I have a cut that I can cut back and forth. And then I have a slow, uh, quicker fade that's 300 milliseconds like so. And then of course I've got the Luma wipe. 
and you can use these to transition this lower third in and out. So it gives you some functionality if say you're producing a podcast or something where you can go and you can make these different scenes where you're gonna use the same camera, but you can add different lower thirds as necessary to bring in different topics of discussion and that sort of thing. Now, that is really what Studio Mode is there for, is to allow you to use this kind of functionality built inside of OBS for producing things like podcasts or live events, that sort of thing. Now we use this function within our church to bring in all kinds of different graphics, whether it's Bible verses, uh, music lyrics, pro presenter media, that sort of thing. We all use studio mode to bring in all those different sources and everything transitioning between those different scenes. And it adds a lot of nice functionality and professional kind of effects to your live stream. So studio mode is really good. Uh, you know, a lot of people probably really don't understand what it's for, but it is actually pretty easy to understand. Uh, you can also get into multi view, which kind of works with studio mode to be able to really give you a broad range. And here, I'll just kind of give you an idea of what multi-view looks like, and you can access it through the view down here if you have it enabled. And you have all these different scenes that you can then transition back and forth just by simply double clicking on each of these sources. So uh, these, I like multi-view a lot. I actually use this at church because we have so many different sources. I just have a full screen display of nothing but multi-view so I can quickly transition and in and out whatever different scenes that I need. So really like this a lot. It's a great way to, again, adds a little bit of professionalism to your live stream using some different effects. Let's build in OBS Studio. So listen, if you have any questions about Studio Mode, please comment below. Let me know what you uh, want to ask. I will try to answer it to the best of my ability. I hope this video helped you out. Go out there and give it a shot and use it. There's all kinds, like I said, there's all kinds of different ways, many different ways that I did not actually show you in here, uh, including uh, using third-party plugins like the move transition, you can use studio mode for that too, which is really neat how you can do that. So anyway, that'll be coming up in more advanced tutorials in the future in this OBS series. So stay tuned for that. And what you'll want to do is you'll definitely want to subscribe if you want to get more content on OBS studio like I'm doing now, as I try to keep it as basic as I can. But again, I appreciate all the support. Make sure you also hit the bell for notifications and you'll know when I have these videos that go live. Other than that, guys, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you later.